This is my dad. He's what you would call a traditional infrastructure engineer. Hi, I'm Chuck Keith, and I'm an infrastructure manager at Supreme Lending. Um, I focus on the uh, system storage side. Now I say traditional because what he does now, it's changing. Shoot, IT is changing. The way we deploy and manage our infrastructure, it's evolving. And this requires new skills, skills that the traditional infrastructure engineer may not have. So his job, the one he's doing now, Will that go away? Like, does he have to actually learn all these new fancy things like Docker and Kubernetes and microservices and the cloud? I mean, basically becoming a DevOps engineer, does he have to do all that just to basically have a job to keep up? Let's talk about that. You know, I, I think about it from time to time. The on-prem, the way it is today, is gonna be totally different in a couple years. Because I know that's a fear a lot of people in our industry have right now. I mean, honestly, I have that fear. I'm traditional in a lot of ways. If I don't change, if you don't change, What's going to happen to us? And thank you to Dell Technologies and their Apex Cloud for sponsoring this video. Let's rewind for a second. What does a traditional infrastructure engineer actually do? Like, what does that look like? Uh, infrastructure engineer, you know, in charge of storage, virtualization, um, you know, anything on-prem. You know, that's um, what we're used to doing. That's what we support traditionally. So, you know, virtual machines, um, VMware, Hyper-V, uh, Active Directory, of course, which is the backbone for Many, many companies, day to day, working on servers, um, managing, you know, virtual servers. Virtual servers, you know, encompasses a lot of the infrastructure. Um, so not only are you building and um, preparing servers, but you're also break fixing and troubleshooting. Now I gotta say this, all the skills involved in being a traditional <laughs> infrastructure engineer, they're crazy valuable. Virtualization, storage, server management, and they'll be valuable for a very long time. However, we are seeing a pretty big shift in how things are done. Now, what's happening to our on-prem infrastructure? What's happening to all the stuff we know and love that lives in our data centers? Well, we definitely see that some of it's going up to the public cloud, this mysterious place that is basically just someone else's servers, someone else's storage. We're borrowing it and we're paying for it. And this cloud might be Amazon, it might be Microsoft, and many, and by many I mean a lot of companies are throwing stuff up there. They're putting their infrastructure that would normally be on-prem with a guy like my dad handling it, and they're taking it and putting it in the cloud. Now you're probably wondering, why? Why are companies doing this? Well, there are a ton of reasons, but some of the main ones you might see is that, hey, this server stuff, it gets old, it ages, you have to buy new ones every once in a while. And guess what? It's kind of expensive. So instead of buying brand new servers that are pricey, it might be a bit easier to try out the public cloud for a few things. So often when people move to the cloud, it's not, let's throw everything up there right now. It's more like these servers, we're gonna retire them. Let's just go to the cloud instead. And if you're one of the cool kids, you'll call it a lift and shift upgrade. And that reason I just gave is actually part of the three laws. Sounds kind of scary, it's not. The first one I just mentioned is all about economics. If we throw stuff up to the public cloud, sure, it's easier. And the upfront costs are cheaper. In the long run, now you kind of have to weigh those cost factors yourself. The second law, the law of physics, this covers things like, hey, what kind of latency do you need for your infrastructure? If you're accessing data in the cloud or vice versa, well, that time to get back and forth cause some headaches for your company. And then the laws of the land. You see, the public cloud does sound pretty lit in a lot of situations, but there may be some security requirements, some compliance things you have to go through that the cloud just can't meet for you. You may have to have that stuff in a data center that you own, that you secure. So the three laws are really all about, hey, is the public cloud for me? In which situation should I throw stuff up there? And in which situation should I keep stuff on-prem? And where's, is there an in-between on that? But still, lots of people are throwing stuff up in the cloud. More reasons we have to do that is because of uh, cloud-native technologies. The way we build our applications, our application architectures, it's also evolving. We're moving to something referred to as cloud native, another industry buzzword. We'll cover more on that here in a bit. So for my dad, the traditional infrastructure engineer, this might mean that he has to start learning some cloud native technologies, which by the way, is its own thing, its own discipline, its own job and career path. I mean, they have a ton of certifications just to learn this. So on top of knowing all the things he already knows, managing on-prem technologies, on-prem infrastructure, he now has to add to his list to learn cloud native technologies. Now we're not done yet because when we move stuff to the cloud, it's not just like a carbon copy of the on-prem environment. The way they do things is kind of different and in some cases like crazy different. The cloud gives you access to new technologies that most traditional IT shops just can't support because they don't know how. I mentioned the buzzword earlier, cloud native, things like microservices, containers, Kubernetes. These technologies give us a new way to deploy our infrastructure, which I mean, our infrastructure, the whole reason we have it is for the applications our company has. So yeah, this new stuff, it's pretty different. Actually, 
way different. And for both custom development and off the shelf apps, a lot of companies are going for this, moving away from traditional virtual machines and doing containers, Kubernetes. So looking back at my dad, the traditional infrastructure engineer, add that to the list, man. Cloud, and now we've got all these new buzzword things we have to learn. Kubernetes, microservices, containers, all the cloud native stuff. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, I'm scratching the surface on this stuff. For someone who's a traditional infrastructure engineer to actually jump into this world, the list is a bit longer. To truly wield the power of all these cloud native things, you need to learn some automation tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, which we've talked about on this channel before. If you're like, what the junk is that? Check it out right here. And now we're getting into DevOps territory. A DevOps engineer is someone who has the skills to manage the infrastructure. So cloud stuff, Kubernetes, microservices, and they also have software development skills. They know enough about that to interact with the dev team. They're kind of the person in the middle coordinating all this magic, creating DevOps pipelines and all this crazy industry buzzword stuff. Now, if you're like me, the question that comes to your mind when you hear about all this new exciting stuff and technology is, hey, are companies actually doing this? Are they actually using it? Are they adopting this new stuff? Because honestly, sometimes in technology, things are trends. They come and they go. So is this just a trend? Are companies actually doing this? And do traditional engineers need to learn all this stuff right now or risk losing their job? Traditionally, you know, I've been on-prem. Um, all of our data centers are, you know, physical somewhere. Um, our company now has started to um, move towards the cloud, um, you know, putting some active directory, um, domain uh, controllers up there, and we're gonna start building uh, machines. We're already doing some development in Azure. I've been concentrating on the on the Azure side of the house, um, you know, getting servers, um, the network stood up. So it's definitely somewhere that um, we'll be. You know, I think we'll always be somewhat of a hybrid shop, but we're, we'll focus more on the cloud in the future. Now, first I'll say this. Not all companies are trying to get on the bleeding edge of tech. And for a lot of good reasons, like normally new tech has new bugs, new issues. A lot of companies are kind of hesitant and slow to adopt new stuff because they wanna see how everyone else does. And frankly, it's kind of the mentality that, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now sure, companies like those trendy startups are using cloud stuff, cloud native everywhere. But honestly, a lot of companies are still rocking the on-prem infrastructure that traditional stuff we know and love, but they are exploring moving some of their workloads, some of the stuff they do to the cloud. Kind of the example I said before, they might have some servers they're retiring. Why not just put that app we had there up there? Our company, to my knowledge, are not using microservices. Um, I know that's something that we'd like to move to in the future, um, probably um, later this year or next year, but I know that's where you need to go where you need to be. And that's kind of the adoption we see with the cloud. It's not like, okay guys, flip a switch. We're in the cloud now. What, you don't know the cloud? You're fired. No, that's not how we're doing things. It's more like one specific project we see. Hey, could we do that up there? Well, that'd be kind of cool. Let's try it. Now again, one of the main reasons companies move their stuff to the cloud is not just because it's called the cloud. It's because it actually has some really cool technology we want to use. But the problem is often this is done without the knowledge of traditional infrastructure engineers like my dad. They think, oh man, we want to do this new stuff. This is cloud stuff, cloud native stuff. Traditional infrastructure engineers who are on-prem, they don't know this stuff and we can't do that on-prem. So we have to go to the cloud and we have to talk to new people and do this whole new thing. Now that's not necessarily true. We'll talk more about that here in a moment, but moving to the cloud again, is not an overnight thing. Widely used apps like Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle, they're being offered as containers, which does make it kind of crazy simple to deploy it and manage it and all that kind of stuff. And we're seeing more of that. So here's the situation. We know companies are moving stuff to the cloud. Where does my dad come in? Where does the role of the infrastructure engineer, the traditional one, come into play? As companies do start to move more and more of their stuff to the cloud, will his skills become more ir irrelevant, I guess? Yes and no, because again, remember, the skills he has now are still so insanely valuable. Like, I mean, goodness, companies can't find people like him. And if you wanna become like him, you should. <laughs> you should learn the skills he has. But when those skills become more irrelevant with the move to the cloud, what's gonna happen? The way I see it, one of two things. We see this first one pretty often. They may adopt a new dedicated environment for their container infrastructure, their microservices cloud native stuff, which often is the public cloud, right? AWS, Microsoft, Google. And when companies decide to do that, they need someone with those skills to do it, right? You don't just remove your server and say, here you go, Amazon, make it cloudy. It's not that simple, right? So with that, you either have to hire a DevOps engineer or someone who knows cloud very well, or get your traditional infrastructure people like my dad to learn the cloud, which by the way, both of those options are fine, but that can often be an expensive endeavor, <laughs> a time consuming endeavor. Now this new trend we're seeing now is pretty cool. They're extending their current environment to support 
all this new stuff. So to contrast with option one, they basically start adding some new infrastructure, extending their current on-prem environment to support cloud native stuff. Now, did you catch that? We're doing some cloud native things on-prem. Instead of throwing stuff up there, we add some new technology down here that can do the cool stuff that we can do up there. Now imagine this, what if engineers like my dad, traditional infrastructure engineers, by the way, every time I say infrastructure engineer or traditional drinking game, you have to take a sip of coffee. Oh, by the end of this, you'll be so excited and ready to go. Ah, okay, anyways, what if engineers like my dad could start using cloud native technologies, Kubernetes, containers, all this cool stuff on-prem, right on their on-prem infrastructure and without a complete overhaul of their current skill set. What if they could use the same tools they're used to using? Like my dad using vCenter, which is VMware's way to manage virtualization. What if he could use that to manage all the new stuff too? Sure, yeah, manage virtual machines like you're used to, but you could also do the new stuff right there in the same tool. This is exactly what we're seeing with VMware vSphere and Tanzu deployed with Dell Technologies Apex. Traditional engineers like my dad can now deploy the new stuff, cloud native stuff, on the same environment alongside the old stuff, your virtual machines. And not only that, using the same tool, they can deploy on-prem cloud native stuff like Kubernetes, and they can also deploy that same stuff in the cloud. And it doesn't matter what cloud provider you wanna use, it's multi-cloud. You can do Azure, AWS, GCP, it all plays with it. And again, you're using the same tool. Now I'm personally a huge fan of this because it puts the power in the hands of the traditional engineers. I'm sure many of you feel the same way I do with all this new stuff we feel like we have to learn right now. And it becomes overwhelming because we're still having to manage our environments, but now we're like, okay, we have to learn all this new stuff too because everything's changing. It's a lot, man, I know. So I love seeing it where the tools we know and love now are helping us move that direction without a crazy learning curve. I mean, sure, there are things that are different about containers and Kubernetes and microservices, but if you can start deploying that stuff with the same tools you know and love, it's a bit easier. And it's also great for companies, right? Like they can start using the new stuff without changing everything they do. They can still use their on-prem infrastructure. They can still use virtualization and VMware, but they can start using the new stuff too. And they don't have to hire a bunch of brand new staff just to manage this. Their existing staff can use it. They already know how. Now I know what you're thinking. Chuck, I wanna play with it. I wanna see what you're talking about. Theory is all fun and cool, but you wanna get your hands dirty. Well, the sponsor of this video, Dell Technologies, actually offers a pretty cool lab environment you can play with. It's called the Customer Solution Centers, and it's a place where you can, you know, play with their solutions. So if you're already a Dell Technologies customer, you're in luck. And also you get to access some SMEs or SMEs to ask questions and, and start to make this cloud native journey. On-prem though, we, you don't have to go up, but you can. It's optional or both, both is cool too. And they also have some self-service demos you can check out in the link below as well. So let's get back to the original question. Will my dad lose his job? You know, I, I think about it from time to time um, because really the, the, the industry is evolving. Um, you know, you see everything pushing to the cloud and, and to me, the duties that we do now, um, I think it's gonna be essential for um, some programming, whether that's, you know, more PowerShell Python um, of course, you know, Kubernetes and, you know, the whole cloud adventure, you know, we're going to have to adapt and change the way we do things now. So, yeah, that's definitely um, uh, one of the things I'm working on. I'm a little bit more uh, cloud-centric in my studies. Uh, I know that um, on-prem, the way it is today, is going to be totally different in a couple years. Well, all the skills he knows now become irrelevant unless he changes everything and learns all the new stuff. No. First, all the skills he has now are still crazy valuable and will be for a long time. On-prem infrastructure is not going anywhere. Two, companies don't have to go to the cloud to take advantage of cloud native technologies. With solutions from VMware and Dell, we're seeing some cool stuff we can do on-prem and engineers like my dad can use their existing skill set to manage this new environment. Now, I will say this, it's still important that traditional engineers change and learn. We are seeing the industry shift this direction. Containers are not going anywhere. Kubernetes is here to stay. And by the way, this is not new for anyone in IT. You know this, you know you have to learn things. The learning never stops, but it doesn't have to be as drastic and scary as some of the you know news articles you might see might make it seem. <laughs> so let me kick that question back to you. What do you think? Do you think the traditional infrastructure engineer role is dying? Are you a traditional infrastructure engineer? By the way, what's the count on that? Are you one and are you worried? Are you picking up these new skills? Let me know below. Well guys, that's about all I have. 
I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, today we're talking about moving traditional infrastructure to containers and companies like Dell are helping make that easier for general IT people like I am and my dad is. I mean, honestly, they're showing a commitment to helping us deal with all these new emerging technologies, making it more palatable. And shoot, tomorrow we might be talking about, you know, AI and quantum computing and all this crazy stuff. And honestly, I'm not worried. What we do now in IT, our jobs, it's going to change. And we're going to roll with it. And the vendors we work with are going to, you know, help us work with their stuff. So if we are doing quantum computing next year, it's going to be kind of cool. And we're going to be doing some cool stuff. Yeah, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.